Okay, so we are going to continue this part and then finish and then uh, uh, take up the questions. So were you able to uh, eat by leaving aside the four to five morsels of food today? <laughs> so <laughs> it's a process, so I think one day uh, that is being Buddhist, that is being a Buddhist eater, you know, uh, dining as a Buddhist, eating as a Buddhist, right? So, uh, okay. So we discuss the first one. Uh, it's about uh, support system. We should have a support system with Kalyanamittas. And second is uh, accepting, accepting more about the, actually what is to be ac uh, accepted? Changes in our life. Changes that are happening, good and bad changes. At the same time, we have to thoroughly believe that we can change things. A lot of things can be changed especially the things that can uh, in turn become a problem to us like sicknesses, diseases, uh, sometimes we make connections to the wrong people, sometimes we're going to uh, start a friendship with a bad friend, Asap Purisa, then expect to pay a big cost at the end with lots of uh, hurt and all that. So we can, we can do a lot of things. That's why in the Mangala Sutta Buddha say, Aseva Nacha Bala right? What is that? Blessings, blessings, blessings. Blessings. There are two types of blessing. One is chanting blessing. Huh? Are you getting that blessing? Always, huh? when you go to the temple on the 1st of January, Chinese New Year, you are the times, you are asking uh, uh, venerable monks to chant for you. That's one. But the real blessing, true blessing, the blessings that you can feel really, they come from your own choices. So the Buddha said there are 38, what do you call, created blessings. You have to create them. Nobody can create for you. Huh? Sometimes we say when we enjoy something, uh, going somewhere, we enjoy for you. Huh? Don't worry. Huh? We enjoy for you because we cannot bring the whole kampung to the place. Right? We enjoy for you. But this one is created blessing. You have to create them. This part you can go to a monastery and ask a blessing from any monk, you know, wherever it's. It may be not that difficult. Right? Created. The Buddha said there are 38 blessings you must create in order to become happy, to uh, not to become, not to get hurt. What are they? Number one is. Not being in the company with the unwise people. Why? The unwise person always gives us trouble and then deviates us. Second blessing is the opposite of that, being in the company with Kalyana Mithras. Third one? Huh? Puja Pujaniya. Right? I don't see you. Where are you? Ah, okay. Please stand up. It's a big crowd here. Okay. Yes. You are right. Asevana chabala nam panditana puja chapujaniya. This happens after a relationship with 20 years of time. Then you start to think, I respected the wrong person. Till that time you are okay. Everything is good, going well. But then you understand, I've been respecting the, the wrong person. I got to quit this thing. 30 years. Why it didn't come to you? 20 years ago, you wasted your time. What the precious time is that? Then the, you did not follow what the Buddha said. The Buddha said, choose, choose uh, wise friends. It doesn't mean that you have to uh, keep, you have to isolate other ones. We still say hi and bye, but safe distance is very important. You know, if you bring them closer. Another blessing, tell me. Being able to live in a place where you feel the peace of mind. You are lucky to be born and then living in a country, different, depending on. You are not in a country where you have the mandatory uh, army training. Not that you have to fight for the other countries on behalf of your country. You, are, you have to be happy about it. There are issues in every country. But, and then the place where you can go to a vihara and access to dhamma and all, the, those are blessings. Patirupa desa vasocha, then what, what else? Other blessings you have to create. Pubbecha katapunyata. 
Why someone is so blessed than you, more blessed than you? They must have done good karmas in the past life. So, what, do you, what are you supposed to do? You also need to do good karma. So then you create them. Another blessing, important blessing. Discuss the Dhamma at the right time. Don't discuss the Dhamma while you are cooking. Huh? <laughs> because, because the Buddha said, Kalena Dhamma Savana. This one. Kalena. Kalena Dhamma Savana. You should listen to the Dhamma talk at the right time. Not while you take in the shower. Because I don't have time, I listen to the Dhamma talk while I'm taking the shower. Very disrespectful. Plus, it is not going to work. And then cooking time. Huh? And then uh, other times. Because you are not ready to let the transformation happen. Also, some people discuss Dhamma at the wrong place. Makan place, you know. It's not nice, you know. You have to discuss Dhamma at the right place. Not that kind of a place where you talk all the gossips and non-virtuous things. Why? When you discuss the Dhamma at the right place, Dhamma will go to your heart. Otherwise, it will get stuck. There are different things that are dangerous if they are getting stuck in the head, you know. One of the things is the Dhamma. You know, there are different things that get stuck in our head. What are the things? Bad memories, <laughs> which we have to heal from. And then, different things can go to head and we get stuck in that thing. Dhamma is one of the things. It doesn't go to the heart. So, right time is important. What is the right time? A time that you can give time to that properly and then let yourself be open for that transformation. Many things. Then, Majjapana Chasanyamo. Uh, Majjapana means intoxicants. If you have to drink, if you're supposed to drink in your work, socialization, try to, try to lower it. If you can, you quit it. If you can, you avoid it. But if you cannot, at least you have a discipline in your drinking habits. Ah, Majjapana Chasanyam. So don't uh, get me wrong. Huh? That means Buddhists can drink. It is a personal uh, <laughs> choice. But Majjapana Chasanyam or Sanyam means discipline. And what else? Mata Pitu Pattanam, taking care of mother and father. Putta Dara Chasanyam, taking care of your hus uh, spouse, wife, husband, part. It's a blessing. Those people who quit the house, they find the easy way to go out of that blessing. No, they say it's a blessing. Not even your husband and wife. Your children. Really giving them the proper true things in their life. So in that way, there are 38. So these blessings come in uh, many uh, formats. So we have to uh, create those blessings, then we can change our life. And then third thing is, another cause of uh, getting so much hurt is clinging. What is this clinging? There are lots of uh, things outside, craveables, you know. Especially uh, food and beverage industry, they promote the idea, craveables, don't let your craveables go unnoticed. Let it go noticed by you, by us, so we can give you a very interesting experience. So we understand. Again, we go back to the food. What are the things people cling to? Food and beverages. What else? Clingings, memories, and then? Huh? Uh, digital addictions, digital. You go to YouTube, but you think you, you think you are a very powerful person, very powerful. You know a lot of them, but unfortunately, you go at 1 p.m. You come back at 6 p.m. YouTube is more powerful than you. Why? Right? You chose to watch a video, then when you want to come back, no, 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 no auto play, auto suggest. On the other side, see all the similar videos coming back. How to watch all these things? You go see, watch one Dhamma talk. Hundreds of Dhammato come on this side. So we have to make a choice. You go watch one particular thing. How to take you out of that thing? Then you should know these digital platforms, they know how our mind works. They've done the research before you. Huh? So they know they want to keep you stuck to that experience, auto-suggesting. If you search something on those platforms, I'm not mentioning those names, they know how to track you down. We are digitally monetized by them. We are monetized. When you watch a YouTube video, we are monetized. Right? We are monetized on the social platform. How not to become monetized? 
just to escape from their unnecessary things and things. So, digital addictions, one thing. I suggest you go watch the video, come back. Then you are very strong. Don't get stuck in those experiences, unnecessary, yeah, unnecessary wasting time. And plus, you don't know time is going. Start at one o'clock and now six o'clock, right? Then you look at what, what you've been watching, all the trashy, rubbish things, you know. They are not important to you also, actually. And then, what else? Clickings. F and B, digital addictions, and then? Hmm? Huh? Wealth, yeah. We all need wealth. Lay people will definitely need wealth, money, but don't cling to that. Right? And loved ones. We all need loved ones. Right? A single life sometimes will be very difficult for to practice Dhamma. Why? Because we need Kalyanamittas. Buddha said you cannot do this all alone. That's why Kalyanamitta is coming in. That means so if you have a good one, it's good. If you don't have what to do. Then, huh? it doesn't mean that you have to officially uh, be with uh, to marry somebody. At least you have someone to discuss something, you know. So that is important. That means don't create clinging to them, but uh, create that uh, uh, healthy uh, encounter with them. It is helpful. And then, what else? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then clinging, yeah, no clinging to anybody, right? It's better, better. Now you, you will you will be questioning what is clinging, what is the company, and the point that you become a problem to them, you are bugging them. That is the uh, fine thin thin line where you have to understand, right? Okay, clinging. So that means if you cling, you will end up with lots of hurt. Number four is attitude. Attitude, we see, we see. Actually, Buddha says the problem of the success in our life is Dhamma life or any other normal life is our attitude. Actually, all these uh, good qualities are not meditations. You think metta is a meditation, loving kindness. You think karuna is a meditation, compassion. You think uh, altruistic joy, mudita is a meditation. You think upekka is a no. These are not medit. These are attitudes. So I say. Walk with metta. If you sit, sit with metta. If you rise, you rise with metta. Because normally we rise with lots of problems. Sometimes I rise to bug somebody, right? And then lie down with some metta, also karuna, also mudita. So none of your postures are exempt from qualities. They become they are supposed to be attitudes not just a meditation because meditation means it's good actually are yeah, meditations uh, in our own way but they are not formal meditations they are attitudes otherwise you only become good on the full moon day half what you new moon day and no other special day katina vesak you know there are vesak buddhists katina buddhists vasana buddhists many buddhists we have to become buddhists at all times right they are only functions for us to intensify the practice. Other than that, we should not be a Vesak Buddhist, not be a Katina Buddhist. We go to the temple only to uh, shower the uh, Prince Siddhartha. And then you never see a temple whether Prince Siddhartha is available or not. You go asking people, where is that? I just have to shower it. That is my Vesak. Right? You are not limiting to that kind of a tiny experience. So attitude. So the people who have a high mind, a very large clarity mind, who have good qualities as attitudes, their life is not full of hurt. They know how to become smart in their thinking. And then the fourth course is not being competent enough. Now there are people fortunately understand something wrong with me. I have to do something. But they don't know how to do it. Tell me one example. One example is, uh, I tell you the story. I normally share this story. There was one businessman who wanted to practice Buddhism. He doesn't know anything, ABC in Buddhism. So he found a monk on the way. He's a married man. He said, uh, I want to practice Buddhism. How to start? Start with dana. You go to the temple, 
give some dana. Then uh, he did that. Then after a couple of weeks, he told the monk, he met again, I want to increase this, da- this is my practice. He said, okay, you are doing once a month now, you make it for four times a month. Every week he is going to do that. And then after some time, he again approached the monk, he said, I want to intensify, increase. Then uh, he said, okay, now you are doing every week, make it to every day. Then he started giving dana every day. Then he said, is, is dana the only thing we do in Buddhism? Like, <laughs> good question. I feel like. I'm not going anywhere, you know, this dana. No, sila also you can do. What is sila? See? Practice some precepts, you know, so you can clarify. Okay, I'll do that. He started with some precept. So he is doing, then he is asking, are dana sila only Buddhism? The monk said, no, I think you are becoming too serious now. So uh, I don't have answers for you. You better become a monk. <laughs> then he went to the, uh, went back home, he told the wife, Wife is, she looks to be a free thinker, okay, never mind, go ahead. <laughs> and then uh, he went to the temple, then monks ordained him. Since the ordi- okay, he got, uh, you know, every monk uh, is getting uh, two people huh, when they become monks. Two people, we call Acharya is one, Upajaya is another one. Okay. Teacher, every monk is getting a teacher called Acharya, Acharya, and then Upajaya, we call it Mento, call it Upajaya. Who are these people? This one is the one who is closely monitoring, supervising the the newly ordained monk, and then this one is the one who periodically, higher than the teacher, we sit and ask, like like a chief monk going this way, somebody, uh, maybe, uh, Sangha member who is uh, overseeing a, a very big area, province, country. So this businessman who became a monk got his Acharya, a Vinaya teacher. Vinaya. Say, so you can't do this, huh? don't sit like this, you cannot. You have to be like this, you have to wake up this time, sleep this time, you cannot talk to these people. And then you cannot, you have to learn from here to here. Then. Uh, anyways, so he said, okay, I'll do. And then, time to time, he has to go and meet the mentor, another monk. He is an Abhidhamma teacher. Every time he goes see the Abhidhamma teacher, he talks about very deep, hardcore Dhamma teachings. He, he can, couldn't understand. So now, after some time, he becomes very frustrated about his ordination. What is this? When I was a lay person, I could do my things, I was happy. I, I really wanted to take it to another level of that happiness. But now what is this happiness? I can't even stretch my arm now. Because these people are commenting on my, stretching my arm. I can't flex my arm. I better destroy. No purpose of becoming a monk. Then uh, other monks uh, told the Buddha he is leaving. Then Buddha asked him to come. And then he asked, what is happening? Why you are leaving? He said, uh, I was a very good devotee and I found this monk and he told me different things. Finally, he asked me to become a monk. I became a monk. But I'm not happy because these two uh, people, teacher and uh, Upachayas, they restrict in my, even my normal happiness. What about this Nibbana? So I better I leave. The Buddha said, forget about Vinaya. Forget about this thing. Forget about Abhidhamma. You don't need to learn about this thing. Can you do one thing? One small thing, he said, what? Can you take care of your thoughts? Can you take care of your thoughts? Akusala, akusala. Oh, in your words, can you take care of your mind? He said, okay, yes, that's what I want. <laughs> then forget about these two. And then he became an arahant. Now, it doesn't disrespect Abhidhamma or Vinaya. But some people don't need to learn these things. You think everybody needs to learn all this? No need. Different people have different, some people, those who don't want to learn, they want to learn from, from here to here and finally bogged down by the information and they can't even do their normal practice. That's why you need the right teacher, get the advice from him or her, right? So that means this uh, competence is enough, this competence is happening 
uh, when you get the right guidance. So, insecurities. When you get the right condition, then you will do what is necessary. When you do the meditation, you need to know from the teacher what meditation is good for you. Right? I uh, met somebody actually in my retreats, and this person is saying, uh, I, I would like to isolate myself. I don't like my family anymore. Okay? I don't like my family anymore. I don't want to join. I don't want to go, in, go join my reunion dinners, uh, uh, Chinese New Year. I don't like um, to join with other uh, family members. Hey, wh what's happening to you? I don't know what's happening, but one thing I did, uh, uh, I, I'm meditating. I said, good. I said, what meditation are you doing? Asubha meditation, 32 body parts. 32 body parts. You might think about when there are so many meditation, why to think about body parts? <laughs> I mean, why? Then I have head hair, I have this, I have uh, heart, I have this, I have all these things. Huh? Then I said, is this the meditation you've been doing all the way? No, 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 I've been doing uh, anapanasat. But there's one monk who came to our center some time ago. He said, better you do the third two body parts. I asked, so was this happening from that time? He said, she said, yes. I said, stop it. You stop this meditation. You go back to the meditation you did, that's good. That's what fits you. Okay. And she changed the meditation. And after a while, I learned that now she's going to like the family, uh, people. Why? What is this 32 body parts meditation? Thinking that there are no humans, only 32 body parts. Huh? There are no humans in this world, no beings. There only exist 32 body parts. Now there is somebody called Anne, and I don't recognize Anne as Anne. I say, ah, no, no, you are not Anne, you are 32 body parts. <laughs> what is this? You have to recognize me, I'm Anne. I'm not 32 body parts. But I'm carrying 32 body parts. But that means this meditation is only good for certain people. Who are they? Who have, who have uh, excessive sexual urge? Who always sexualize everybody in this? Fantasize, sexualize everything. You see somebody, okay, sexualize. See somebody, sexualize. Hypersexualizing everything. That is a problem. But the sexual conduct is okay in Buddhism. What if that there is someone who is already married, who is already always trying to look for everything, every time? See, this is my way. Ah, 32 body part meditation is only prescribed to this kind of something wrong person by a teacher as an antibiotic given by a doctor. Are doctors giving you antibiotics for a disease for uh, one year, two years? Oh, only for a couple of weeks, only for a month or two months, only for a short time. The doctors are very worried whether this will kill your good bacteria, pre prebiotic stuff. So that means teacher has to see what meditation is going to be good for you. So that means this com incompetency happens, but you don't understand your character. Teacher has to understand. Then overthinking, this is also unnecessary, right? Overthinking has to be really. Uh, why people overthink? Why do people overthink? They have nothing to do. So they overthink. Stay home, man, you know? Stay home, sit down. Look everybody. Like some people, when they go to the mall, they, they don't buy anything. They people watch. Watch people. How pe other people buy this stuff. Right? They watch people walking. So when you have nothing to do, you overthink. That is one reason. Second thing is that I normally say to people, don't pick up everything that is happening in your household. When you pick up, okay, what are you doing? What did you say? Can you explain to me again? Then you are creating another mess. That person doesn't know how to explain. You don't know how to understand. Right? It's like somebody who doesn't know Pali chanting for the ghost. Ghosts don't understand what you chant. You don't know what you chant. Right? They are chanting for the non-human beings. You don't know what you chant. You only just go. 
and those people also don't know what, what you chant. So how are you going to create blessings, power? Nothing is going to work. So that means don't pick up everything. These are ways to minimize overthinking. If you pick up, don't pick up. Just, I mean, let's say you are your mother, father, loved ones, you have to pick up. But sometimes don't pick up unnecessary things. Give the credit, give the validation. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be a busy body. And uh, fear of healing, confidence. That means when you learn properly with the right person, you feel confident. Confidence is very necessary for the Dhamma practice, right? Even to ask a Dhamma question is confidence. Because you have a problem, you ask it. How many people, they have a problem, they just keep quiet. They are not even confident to raise their problem. They have the problem, they are suffering a lot, but they are not confident. That means boosting confidence. And then this process, conditioning of our own thoughts. Our thoughts are always conditioned, right? Due to people we meet, due to situations we are going through. So we need to understand how our thoughts are being conditioned time to time. So then, if so, we can definitely heal us. Uh, how to give a good example for that? I would say, uh, you are a very good person. Then suddenly you meet a bad friend. The bad friend changes your way of thinking. Right? So, badly conditioning, not uh, skillfully conditioning because of the bad person. And finally, seal apart. You should maintain some level of precepts. Right? This is very important. So, that's the competency part. Then, uh, forgiveness. Why are we supposed to? I, I think we, our last retreat was about forgiveness here, we, which we did. We talked about forgiveness extensively. And then why do we supposed to forgive? Is it for the sake of what and who? We need to forgive others, not for others. For us in the first place, then for others. Some people don't feel, why should I forgive? Done sort of bad things last many years. No, you forgive yourself for the sake of you, right? So they mistakenly understand, I forgive for other people. Why, why do I let them free? You forgive for you. So that will take care of a lot of unnecessary hurt. Then this is six. Then what else? I think in, yeah, gratitude. I think you forgive because you are grateful to everything. That will also help minimize unnecessary uh, hurt. When you are grateful, let's say there is someone who is very bad, but you know at the same time this person has helped you a lot and you bring lots of uh, things up. Huh? And then finally, doubts. Why are we coming up with doubts? It, it, it is because we don't discuss with the person. Why there are lots of insecurities, trust problems in many families? They don't talk. Nowadays, they don't anyways talk. Children don't talk to parents. Why? They are busy in their life. How to engage them? How to interact with them? We have to sometimes keep our phones away. We have the real talk to each other. Phones are in, uh, important too, but we use the phone whenever we want, not all the time, addicted to the phone, internet. Then we can have the real chat. But then parents are saying, our children are not talking to us, they only come for the dinner, they only come for the lunch, asking mommy, is the dinner ready, is the lunch ready, then only I come down, I'm in my own life, you guys are in your own life. Why is this separation? Parents are also responsible in a way for this problem. They have to get them involved in the real discussion, not, not blaming the gadgets only. So that, that means th these unnecessary doubts can be met so that you are not heard. Sometimes you are not discussing with the loved ones properly, communicating not properly. So more doubts are coming, you are more hurt. That person is hurt, you are hurt, no clarity. Okay, are there any other causes why we are getting hurt? I think you miss one thing. We are not universalizing our pain, not being able to universalize. Let's say someone is having a cancer. That cancer patient think that, why me? Why not others that I know? Then you understand. It is not only why me. Why not me? Why not me? 
I am also part of this human. I think a lot of hurt that we are going through, they are not happening only to me, happening to everybody. And universalizing our pain uh, is a good way not to become hurt. All right, so we discuss extensively about this part. Uh, I think, uh, uh, depending on the timing, uh, we can uh, probably uh, take maybe a couple of questions. Uh, uh, Brother Danny will moderate a little bit. Uh, and then I think we don't have time to discuss a lot because of other things. But probably now almost 2 o'clock, maybe we can go for another 15 minutes. But it's, yeah, please. First question, somebody drop. Those shy people, huh? <laughs> okay, uh, so I have received my questions. Written questions. Okay, so just want to know if we are eight preceptors and if we hear the five precept, but we don't say it, but somehow mentally, are we committing anything or broke the five precepts? Uh, can you repress again? So it's basically uh, if they observe eight percent, mm -hmm. but then we hear other people recite the five percent, ah. and the mentally also recite but not verbally. So are they breaking the the the, 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 the mean breaking the eight Okay, I think this uh, happened today. Yeah, uh, I don't know whether you took it. It's okay. I mean, I think when you go to tomorrow, also be careful. When you go to the dana hall, uh, the the monks are giving five precepts for the volunteers, or maybe other devotees who are coming for offering dana, not for you. So you don't have to take them, right? You just uh, uh, don't take them. Uh, mentalizing, you don't mentalize. You know, this is not for me. This is for others because you already took precepts today. Yeah. Second question. One day while I'm, I'm doing healing meditation, I let go at the moment, but fall asleep. Is this working or question mark? <laughs> Again, while I'm doing healing meditation, I let go at the moment, but fall asleep. Is this fall asleep? Fall asleep. I think that might be a good indication that person let go properly. <laughs> you know, it, it might be because then I think when that release, you feel very happy and you just fell asleep, you know, probably. Yeah. That means everybody who let, want to let go, this is the indication. It, it, there's an instant sleep coming up. Huh? Be careful, don't let go while you're driving. Huh? Only when you have a good time in the house, do it. Okay. No. There's nothing wrong. No. But my question is, do we need to go and take the eight precepts ourselves after that? Uh, no, no, I don't think. I don't think you you, you, you need to. She said ask something because people can't hear. So mm. the first question uh, the lady asked is uh, the question was uh, when we are taking the eight precepts and at lunch we we follow the monks and take the five precepts, are we breaking any rules? So there's no rules I don't think none of you took five precepts. You were there, right? You didn't take five precepts. There were many people who forgot your ah, okay. your advice and yes. chanted. So it's okay now you... But there's uh, nothing wrong in it. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's just in, unintentional. Unintentional. So... Uh, huh? <laughs> no, 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 no. No karma. No bad karma. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. There was one retreat, uh, the monk advised us to go uh, and sit in a corner, I mean after the lunch, go and sit in the corner and just do the eight percent again. Is that necessary? Not very necessary because it's, 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 you understand that's enough. Yeah, this Buddhism is not uh, following a theory. It's your own thoughts. What if somebody says, today I had an angry thought, but I think it's not an angry thought. Come and go. Do I really have the angry thought? How to answer this question? How do we answer this question? There is somebody is asking me a question. I think I had an angry... I, I think I had... I also think I don't... I, I didn't have it. 
So these questions are not necessary to answer. If you think that you are on the on a safer side, you are okay. It's not uh, always necessary to do things specifically at that point. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I think we better take the audio. Somebody can pass this out to Brother Danny. Is the mic given to him? Yeah, please give the mic to him. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ah, okay, good. Okay, can you question the third question? While I am practicing healing meditation, I saw a white sheet of light. What is this actually? Okay, this is about meditation. When you practice meditation, if the meditation is going to be successful at the initial level, you get to see certain wrong indications. We call them fallacies in meditation. Uh, that means you may see a black rock. I was on somebody in my, one of my, I saw a black rock. The person next to him was, I didn't see that. That means I, my meditation is not going well. Where is that black rock? I should also meditate to see the black rock. I said, don't worry about black rocks. There are many rocks. <laughs> right? Don't worry about it. This person saw it in his own meditation. You don't need to be worried about it. But seeing a rock, feel floating somewhere, seeing some lights, different colors of lights, these are indications that your mind is in the neighborhood of become, on the way to become concentrated. Because normally you don't concentrate your mind, you just let it go everywhere, let it go astray. You see a, a image, ah, what is that? Okay, let me see that. I have to see it properly, I have to take a photo. Mind is like that all, all the time, normally in this secular life. So when the mind is going to the opposite side, mind is getting flashbacks. Mind itself is getting flashbacks. So these are the flashbacks. So my recommendation is, you keep meditating. You, you may have a meditation to go to that level, keep meditating, then you are going to overcome that level, go to the next level. The next level is very interesting. What is that? You will almost feel you are not breathing anymore. Okay? In the meditation, there are certain stages. Is it okay if I erase some part? Okay. I'm going to erase this part. You can't uh, heal without erasing, right? right? In the meditation, the first level of success is wrong indications, such as lights, some, uh, some stuff like that, floating, rocks, uh, things like that. Then you are continuing your meditation. Second level is this, what you call? breathless state. Now don't misunderstand. This means you are not physically breathless. You must have died then. You will feel that you are not breathing at that point. That means breathing has been super calm as a consequence of meditation. Then you are continuing the first object. Then what happens? You are coming to a level of becoming thoughtless stage. It doesn't mean you are not thinking. If you are not thinking, you must have Either having a certain uh, brain damage, brain death, right? This means not many thoughts are coming to you, not many akusalas are coming. You feel like something is happening. I, I feel like my Dhamma practice is not by effort anymore. No, now your Dhamma practice is by effort. Huh? You have to go run to the Vihar. Okay, I have to do meditation. I've got to catch up with right? You are running to that. Why? It is by effort. At this point, it becomes by default, by nature. Your nature is kusala. You feel like not many unnecessary thoughts are coming, you feel thought. But you continue your meditation. Then contemplation. What are these? Contemplations means there are four types of contemplation. This is the perfect time to think about anicca, 
changes of life. You pick one of them. How my life has been changing for the last one year, two year, three year, past decade. I see a lot of changes. So I want to embrace the changes for the transformation, to become a better version of who I am. Not my 80th, 80th uh, version, not my 50th, uh, 50 uh, age, 50th decade version, not my 40th year of uh, change. Now I am in my own age, but I want to become the best of myself. So at this point, you pick up one of them. One is Anicca, change. Another one is Viraga. Viraga means dispassion. Earlier in my life, I liked everybody that I met. I like everything I had. I like every food I have. But now, I'm not becoming choosy. But I want to understand this is a problem in my life. Why to like all these things? I want to have my peace of mind. Third is cessation. What is this? Nirvana. Nibbanic moments. Are we getting Nibbanic moments before the Nibbana? Now, everybody talking, go to Nibbana. Right? Go to Nibbana. But are we not getting some uh, Nibbana hit sometime? Instant Dhamma hits. You feel, ah, oh, I'm so happy now. Huh? Some kind of bliss. So we are calling this as Nibbuta. Nibbuta means Nibbanic moments. So before, even in, in your daily life, you feel you are enlightened sometime. Right? Not those uh, music people. Huh? Okay, I'm perform today, going to perform today with my violin. I'm going to enlighten everybody here. That's a different enlightenment. <laughs> right? But I'm, I'm telling you, we are having lots of Nibbanic moments in our life, the peace of mind. So you pick up one of the contemplations here. Either uh, change, either this passion, either cessation, or what you call letting go. So then when you really, when you are, whatever the meditation, breathing meditation, whatever, when you do it properly, you are going through these processes, stages. So that question comes from somebody who hit this stage, initially hit this stage, still wondering what to do. Okay. For question. Good day to you. I realize that I am not easy to concentrate during sitting and walking. Meditation. There are many thoughts in my head. May I know, is there any way to resolve this issue? Any recommendation? Many thoughts. I think we all have many thoughts. You are another natural person, normal person. You are not an extraordinary, no sorry, you are not an abnormal person. <laughs> it's normal. But uh, our thoughts have to, uh, uh, when the thoughts are happening, uh, we need to sort of uh, 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 check out whether these are kusala or akusala. Now, the person does not differentiate kusala or akusala in his or her thoughts. This is a problem. We, we are not worried about uh, uh, how many thoughts that we are getting. Uh, what if there is a certain uh, mentally sick person who has some uh, certain mental problems? Say, for instance, uh, somebody who has an attention deficit uh, disorder, a uh, kid, who has a problem to pay attention to mother, father, always here, 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 mind go everywhere. So what is this? This is a problem. Problem uh, with regard to the uh, neurochemicals, uh, inflammation in the neurochemicals. Uh, what about somebody who has dementia? Also same, inflammation of the uh, neurochemicals, dopamine, all these things. What about uh, Alzheimer? So there are things like that. But there may be some people who have hyper issues. What are the hyper issues? Um, like who is uh, by behavior or by nature very fast in thinking. This can be good or bad. Other than that, normal thoughts are coming to us. It's no problem. Yeah. But you have to check whether those thoughts are kusala or akusala. Then you are okay. Good. We will take one more question and then the rest of the question we will leave up to tomorrow uh, for our q &A. Okay. Uh, yeah. Fifth and last question. Bhante, can you describe the nine ways to attain Upekha? And is there a sutta that describes this? How did you find there are nine ways? That means, that means you must have watched one of my talks that I gave. Yes, go watch the video. <laughs> That's it. I, I gave a sutta study uh, in another center. 
so in there I talk about nine upekka. Upekka is not one upekka. Nine upekka. Okay? There are nine upekka. I, I show you maybe two upekka here. Uh, okay, what is upekka? Okay, normally people say... Huh? When the English translations are sometimes yeah, upekka. What is, uh, uh, you know, uh, this upekka means, uh, what do you call it? balance of, balance of mind. So, there are in this translation equanimity. Normally, what is happening to us every day? We are, we are swayed by, we are shaken by eight things, eight worldly conditions. What are they? Lab. Uh, maybe today might be a bad day for somebody who lost a lot of money to a scammer, maybe to an unnecessary thing, right? Uh, right? So losses are happening time to time. Then you feel very down on that day. I lost lots of money to that unnecessary thing. Maybe you learn that you, you've been buying a product, then you understand uh, it was red flag by the government. Red flag by the food authorities, red flag by others, uh, unnecessary money, I spend a lot of money for this. Then, labo, uh, that part, alabo. Labo, sometimes we are getting lots of profits. Right? So we are very happy, overwhelmed. Two conditions now. Then, other conditions? Labo, alabo, ayaso, yaso. Sometimes we are complimented by people. Sometimes we are criticized by other people. These are changing conditions. But if you think that you should be complimented every day, then it can be your own problem. You have to expect a lot of stress and then pain. But if we do a really wrong thing, we have to fix it. Right? Doing the wrong thing and exp doing, uh, expecting criticism is bad. But doing the, uh, the, the proper thing, having the criticism and understanding it. And time to time, we have a good reputation and we have a bad reputation, right? So these things are also changing. That's why we say some about some people, uh, this is the pinnacle of that person's life nowadays. I think in another 10 years, you are not that popular enough. And then finally, sukha dukkha means happiness. Sometimes we are happy, sometimes we are unhappy. How to become happy every day? That is a tomorrow talk morning. I save the information. But I tell you, the secret answer is Upekka. I give you the heads up. Upekka is how to become happy every day, every moment. Upekka. Being able to see things with a balanced mind. Some people cannot do it. They always go to the extreme. Right? They always want to take them extreme. So one Upekka is equanimity. Another Upekka. What is another upekka? We call this Brahma Vihara Upekka in Pali. Brahma Vihara. Don't say equanimity alone. Na? When you say equanimity, that is called Brahma Vihara Upekka. One upekka. There's another upekka. Sankhara Upekka. Don't worry about Pali. I just want to explain to you. Sankhara means this upekka is a little different. Sankhara Upekka. What is the Sankhara? Sankhara means we all are Sankharas. Huh? Are we sankharas? Yes. What is that context of sankhara? Huh? We were conditioned by somebody. I was conditioned by mother, father. And you were conditioned by your mother, father. They were conditioned by their own mother, father. This whole conditioned by somebody's thought. Right? Who designed this plan and everything. They were conditioned by who asked them to do that. Right? And then those people who ask them to do condition by the request of somebody that we want this kind of big hole, all are conditioned except one thing, Nibbana. Nibbana is the unconditioned, asankata. So then this second layer of Upekka says, if you can understand this conditioning process, this conditioning process, you are cultivating another level of Upekka. Uh, I don't have time to explain other things. Go and watch the video. <laughs> the rest of the night. Go watch the video. So, there are two at this point. Alright, so we are behind the time a little bit now. So, uh, I think we discuss uh, about uh, 
uh, healing part today. Actually, I was trying to tell you, we can heal. Definitely we can heal. That is the very good answer, I tell you, we can heal. But we need to be equipped with the right things in our life. The right things are these things. So we will see the good side. We should have good, at least one Kalyana Mitra, except the Buddha, must. Second, let's accept embrace. This has to be done. Third, let's lower clingings. I know that it's hard to uh, get out of clinging sometimes. Say you have a lot of emotional attachment. Uh, really difficult sometimes. But at least we try in our own way, uh, uh, in a better way. Uh, this does not mean that you cannot uh, like somebody, you cannot be in love with somebody. Uh, it's not clinging. Clinging means you are going to push it very hard. You are very hard on that. So when you are hard on anything, you can't do anything, right? You can't be hard on anything in Buddhism. So the, uh, that means lower clinging. Fourth thing is, try to create our own, uh, what do you call, skills about this healing part. We have to cultivate certain skills such as security, uh, then not thinking too much, right? not picking up all the things that other people are talking about us, create confidence, uh, uh, discipline, uh, that's the fifth one. Sixth one, I think we were talking about uh, forgiveness, cultivate forgiving, Definitely forgiveness is not something in the books that you see. It is a living practice. Bring to your life. Not that only you read from the suttas. Then gratitude also something not in the Dhamma talk. It has to happen in your real life. Right? It is a real thing. So you are grateful since morning to evening every day. Then clarify your doubts. These things will definitely give you heightened sense of higher levels of healing. Not that you heard something, ah, today I am healed. No. A very substantial, very strong level of healing. And then since that day onwards, you are not wounded, hurt anymore. Even people are trying to come and hurt you, you take it very easily, you take it very lightly. Right? So this is what we discussed. So this is the nature of our meditation also. And then uh, uh, tomorrow Q&A, uh, we have a Q&A for tomorrow. Uh, it, it will be the place where you ask questions for the last time about this subject. And uh, tomorrow uh, there's a Dhamma talk as a part of the Sunday Buddha Puja. Uh, there I talk about something else, another layer of this problem, but in a nice uh, perspective. What is it? Uh, how to be happy during, during difficult times. I think that is the next layer of this problem. Now you are hurt, suppose you are hurt, but you're supposed to be happy, you deserve to be happy. But how to be happy? Not when you are in the good mood, in the difficult time. So we are learning the real gadgets, real uh, equipments, what we want to practice uh, in the Buddhist practice, okay? So then we will wish, may all the good karmas uh, be making in this Q&A session also be supportive and helpful for us to heal every moment, heal every time, and then finally attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. And now we are taking time for a um, break for 15 minutes. I would say uh, until 2.45, uh, and then we will uh, start uh, our sitting meditation uh, from 2.45, again 3.15. <coughs> And 3.15 to 5, we will do that. So we, we are a little bit behind that. We will catch up our timing again during the uh, personal interview time. So now you are taking a break until 2.45, yes. <laughs>